Joining us now is Congressman Mike Quigley. He's a member of the Intelligence Committee in the House. Congressman Quigley, it's great to have you here tonight. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Tell me where you have been previously on the issue of impeachment and whether or not that inquiry should be opened um, and, and how you're feeling about it now. Sure. I mean, for me, it was never a question of whether the president was fit for office. He is not. It was never a question of whether he has abused his powers. He has. Whether he obstructed, he certainly has. And I believe he and his cohorts conspired with the Russians. To me, it was an effective way to move forward in this investigation. What was the best strategy? And I attempted, for all these three years that I've been watching this, uh, sadly, because it's been three years since my intel committee started to get brief about Russian meddling in the democratic process. Mm. I, I tried to be the reasonable voice that talked about getting to the truth so the American public can help us make that decision and that we did, couldn't get ahead of them. But, uh, you know, the events in the last couple of weeks just made it impossible for me to stay where I was. Uh, the fact that there is obstruction after the fact, uh, that's how I describe the fact that Clearly, the president, in detailed uh, analysis by the special counsel, obstructed prior to his release of that report. What's maddening is he and his office and the attorney general have obstructed after the fact. They've made getting subpoenas answered, getting the unredacted report uh, available to Congress impossible. So how are we reasonably going to make a decision as to whether other crimes and misdemeanors were, uh, were conducted? without getting this information. So at this point, we have nothing to lose. And uh, I think opening impeachment inquiry will help us get that information. And to your point, I think it will help educate the American public, who obviously most have not read the Mueller report. And their first blush with the Mueller report was a lie by the attorney general that the president was exonerated. And we're still overcoming that. And I think, if anything, the special counsel gave us that window uh, to present the alternative to it. And that's an inquiry. So uh, for whatever it's worth, in your program, I'm announcing that uh, I, I notified the speaker's office today that I'm uh, now asking that we open an inquiry. Is it your sense that the speaker is um, keeping a tally or keeping track as her <laughs> conference uh, as Democrats in the House seem to start to be shifting on this. As I mentioned, we've been seeing a lot of people who were previously reticent or previously opposed to opening an inquiry now saying, like yourself, that it should happen. Um, is there dialogue happening with the Speaker's office here? Oh, certainly. And I think Speaker Pelosi may be one of the great underrated uh, politicians of our time. She understands how to work a caucus. It is tough to be a Speaker in this day and age, Democrat or Republican. I mean. The Republicans had more members in Congress than at any time since the Hoover administration, and they shut the government down and they chased out Speaker Boehner and Speaker <laughs> Ryan. So to answer your question, absolutely. I, I have never seen the Speaker in better form than she is now under extraordinary circumstances. So I, I think we're going to move forward. Uh, I think it's a process that we're going through right now, and clearly uh, she's in touch with all members. When you say um, that part of your calculus on this, part of your thinking about this now, is that you feel like you have nothing to lose, that opening an inquiry may help uh, obtain documents, obtain testimony, obtain uh, witnesses uh, that you otherwise are getting stonewalled for. Um, one of the objections that has been raised by the Speaker's office, and I think it's an interesting one, is that if an impeachment inquiry is opened in the Judiciary Committee, it might potentially head off the kind of investigation that you're doing on your committee, uh, the Intelligence Committee, or that Congressman Cummings is heading up in the Oversight Committee. There are these robust inquiries that are happening in other committees that would, I guess, have to interact with the impeachment inquiry or, or somehow be melded with that. Do you worry at all about the ability of your committee, the Intelligence Committee, to continue its work if an impeachment process was started? Well, considering what we've been through, I mean, let's just remember Chairman Nunez co-opted my committee, the Intelligence Committee's investigation, and they shut it down, obviously, prematurely. So uh, it's not easy working together through complicated matters like this, but I think those chairmen all get it, right? Nadler, Cummings, and Schiff, they understand that there's more than one task that's involved here. And this investigation began at its very start as a counterintelligence investigation. 
The American public needs to know we are still on that. The House Select Committee on Intelligence continues that work through the subpoena process. The Justice Department just released some of the documentation documentation to us, hmm. but we are ready to proceed if at any point they stop cooperating. It is extraordinarily important to, for folks to know what, that Mueller thought that most of that was outside the scope of his investigation. But it's fair for us to ask whether the president of the United States was compromised. And frankly, I believe he was. So uh, I believe, to answer your question, we can do more than one thing at a time. It won't be easy, but it's additional information that tells us what kind of president we have. Congressman Mike Quigley, member of the House Intelligence Committee, says he now favors starting an impeachment inquiry. Uh, sir, I really appreciate your time tonight, and thanks for helping us understand your, uh, your decision here. Thanks for making the announcement here. Anytime. Thank you. Much appreciated. All right, more ahead to come. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.